This man was starts in a school. In a normal day, there we can see a guy talking to someone named Dowand. He asks him if he is playing again. And at the same time, other boys are also making fun of Dowand for the same subject. And one of them tells him that he is an otaku gamer. We can also see all the gadgets that Dowan has on his desk. But it turns out that he does all this for those same boys who have been making fun of him. At the same time we realize that Dowan is a shuttle of video games. But he does not like to do this. While Dowan is doing his job, someone tells him that he is very good at what he does. And when he turns to see who it is, he realizes that it is a beautiful girl named Aaron. And while preparing her mobile to play, she tells Dowan that despite her trying many times, she has not been very good at video games. At that moment Dowan realizes that the girl is playing a game called Life Game. But the girl is only playing that because she has made a bet with her friends and the winner will be the one who can collect the most points. But currently she is in the last place, even though she has tried hard. So Dowan tells the girl that he should take care of that matter. But she tells him not to bother since he seems pretty busy with all those gadgets on his desk. And for some reason she wants to win the bet by her own means. So, to keep the conversation alive, Dowan tries to empathize with her a little by talking to her about a saying that goes like, Life is like video games. This means that everything you play will teach you something important in life. But the girl in a slightly mocking tone tells him that it doesn't mean that. And Dowan tries to continue the conversation but suddenly someone interrupts and it is a girl's friend who tells her to come down for dinner since everyone has already gone downstairs. So the girl proceeds to leave and just wishes Dowan good luck with what he's doing. Then Dowan gets a little heartbroken as he thought he would have a chance with the girl but he didn't. In addition, he recognizes that it was nonsense since the girl does not even know his name. But then, the girl quickly turns back and says, Thanks for everything Dowan. And this gets Dowan completely paralyzed because of the fact that the girl knew his name. It was something he did not expect, but an event interrupts Dowan's glorious moment, and that is that one of the characters he is in charge of has died, and is a penalty to the character for having died. He has lost a collectible sword that seems to be unique, so Dowan gets quite nervous because it seems that this was the boy's favorite weapon, and he had commissioned him the character. The boy's name is Chelwell. Dowan at that moment is hoping that the owner of the character is not going to find out or else he would be furious, but surprisingly he is hit by the owner of the character himself. But Dowan to ease the situation and Cholo doesn't hit him again, tells him not to worry and that he will give him his cell phone with his collectible weapons but please don't get angry. And Cholo immediately his mood and tells Dowan that he should warn him before he hit him. But in any case, that does not make him free from his sin. So he prepares his hand and starts hitting Dowan again and meanwhile he thinks about how Cholo is like someone from a video game who only takes advantage of the weak ones, to prove his strength and skill, and that he is nothing but a miserable. In any case, Dowan suffered a severe beating by Cholo and he tells Dowan to do it right next time, and he will give him a week to return back the sword he lost due to his lack of responsibility. But Dowan protests about how Cholo thinks that in a week it will be possible to get that sword. In that moment, Cholo replies that he stopped paying attention to his phone because he was talking to that prostitute Aaron, and that in that case he will have to give him a better motivation so he warns him that if he doesn't give him back his sword in a week, then he will strip Dowan in front of Aaron and give him a frantic beating. That's when some friends of the attacker arrive and start talking about other issues and meanwhile Dowan is left lying on the ground, and all he does is curse the game and his job, since he adores video games and calls himself a video game otaku. In a new scene, Dowan is in his room and we are in spring break, so he feels pretty comfortable since he won't see those classmate bullies again for a few days. So he is going to take advantage of the fact that his mother is traveling abroad and he is alone in the house. This will give him enough time to play as much as he pleases. Dowan is quite relaxed and the reason is because he has a max level account in the roaster RPG game, the same game where he has to retrieve Cholo's sword. The thing is that this guy stopped playing that game because it became too easy for him since he reached its max level. But surprisingly Dowan reads the new game update patch notes and realizes that now there is a new level cap. And the gameplay has been increased in difficulty. And not only that, now the probability of obtaining legendary items has been significantly decreased. This makes Dowan a bit desperate but he is ready to play on his account. After 18 consecutive hours he has barely managed to advance just a little. It's already been 37 consecutive hours of gameplay and Dowan is very upset as he can't find any worthwhile items. So he begins to take out his frustration on his computer monitor while protesting that they have lowered the probability of dropping these items. But he soon realizes why the game programmers have done this. They have released a hunter's package which includes an increase in experience. It also multiplies the probability of finding legendary items by 5. In few words they have made the game pay to win. After 64 hours of play, Dowan is still on his desperate search for a legendary item, but he still hasn't found it despite spending all his in-game resources to find the item he's looking for. But it has all been in vain and Dowan already feels exhausted. 
144 hours in game have already passed and the boy continues with his mission but his only problem is not finding the item. But it is also taking him too long to kill a single NPC. And by the way, nobody wants to be in a group with him because his level is very low. Dawan is already getting used to the idea of being naked and beaten in front of Aaron. And also the hunter's package that he had bought with cash only has 8 minutes of activity left. So Dawan already takes for granted what waits for him when he gets back to school. While he was fighting a top level boss and just when this boss was going to give his final blow against his character, a super powerful player appears, and one hit kills the boss and offers a party match to Dawan. Dawan was not going to let that opportunity go, so he obviously thanked the other character for agreeing to go with him. He spends some time playing and finally Dawan manages to find the King of Fire's sword that he was looking for so much. But he soon found out that he actually found another sword called the Fire God's Sword, which is a god level weapon. Dawan celebrates it since he thinks that, thanks to all the effort he made that week was not in vain, and he even thinks of selling it in an in-game store. But soon he decides to give the Fire God's sword to the character who helped him, and Dawan on the other hand would keep the King of Fire's sword since that is the one that he has to return to Cholwo. After this, Dawan feels quite calm but at the same time he is very tired and his eyes almost close by themselves, so he decides to go to sleep to go back to school the next day. But just when he is about to get up from his chair, he collapses without any control of his body. Because of the lack of sleep, lack of nutrients and the exaggerated consumption of caffeine are manifesting in that moment. Dawan thinks he is going to die so he takes advantage of his last seconds of life and says goodbye to his mother and asks her not to be too in shock when she gets home. He also thinks that it is very idiotic of him to have died for being a video game shuttler. He also remembers Cholwo and curses him. And he also thinks that if he had known that this was going to happen at least he would have written a will. He soon realizes that his thoughts have not stopped so he wonders if he is really dead. Suddenly everything goes dark and then a window appears as if it were a game, which welcomes him and tells him that the character's class will be decided after the personality is qualified. So the window does the analysis and determines that Dawan is a game shuttler with no skill. It also mentions that a search event has been triggered and if he wants to participate. But Dawan is quite confused and understands absolutely nothing of what is happening. Then this window tells him that the mission has been mentally accepted. So the event will start and to respawn at the coordinates that the administrator has set. From one moment to the next, Dawan appears again in the classroom just when Aaron says goodbye to him before she goes to dinner. So Dawan is confused and scared at the same time. But it seems that dimension can be altered since Aaron now reacts differently and notices that Dawan's expression is quite scary. At the same time, Dawan continues to wonder in his head about what could be happening. But for him it's ridiculous that this is a dream and a window appears in front of him again, showing him all the information about it. And we see that he is level 1 and does not have any type of power or ability. But Dawan can't believe that even in a video game he appears as a shuttle player since he hates doing that kind of thing. Soon a pop-up window appears saying that his role's effect is being activated and this worries Dawan since he has no idea what that window is saying. Once the effect is active, it also tells you that all accumulated experience the player has in past games will be linked to it. Which means that if this window talks about all the experience of all the games he has played as Shuttle, then that would be a huge amount of experience. But once again Cholo arrives and the scene is repeated. But Dawan gets upset and blames him for all that is happening to him. But Cholo gets upset since he doesn't like the way Dawan has answered to him. Neither likes the way he is looking at him. In any case, Cholo starts beating Dawan severely again. But he is confident that it won't hurt because he is in a dream. But, to tell the truth, it hurts a lot. And then Cholo goes on and on hitting and telling him that he will keep hitting him until he is angry no more. In that moment, Aaron arrives to get his phone back and finds herself with that terrible scene, while Dawan is humiliated and beaten in front of the girl he likes. So Aaron tries to stop Cholwo, but he teases her and pulls her hair. He told her not to be so edgy just because all the boys tells her she's pretty. He also calls her a bitch. Dawan's head begins to be invaded quickly by hundreds of thoughts about how to help Aaron, and he thinks he can't do anything. But in an instant and just when Cholwo is going to slap Aaron, Dawan stands up with courage and attacks Cholwo, but he manages to stop his fist and counterattacks a few millimeters before his fist manages to brutally hit Dawan's face. The window appears again indicating that all experience has been calculated and quickly rises to a shuttler higher rank, and that he has unlocked an ability called Devastating Blow. And in a matter of milliseconds Dawan activates this ability and manages to end the fight by defeating Cholwo. Both Aaron and Dawan can't believe what just happened. But the window appears again with an internal message that was sent by someone to Dawan and says, Don't panic. This is the payment for the favor Dawan has done. In that moment, Dawan remembers that it is about that player who had been with him in the group and to whom Dawan had given the fire's god sword. 
Again, the window tells him that he has received 200 experience points for defeating Cholo the monster, and the points have been added to his total experience, so it was almost complete. And together with those 200 points that he just earned, he managed to complete the maximum experience, so he has been promoted to sealed shuttler rank. And while the texts appear saying that his stats have increased to the maximum, Dowen couldn't believe what was happening. At the end, Dowen falls flat on the floor, while Aaron, surprised, asks him where he learned all that. The girl also realizes that Dowen has gotten a severe hit in his head so she runs out to call the nurse, and Dowen wonders if all this is happening because of that hit in his head, and the fact that he had traveled back in time. But all that reminds him of a book that he had read some time ago which was called Fantasies of a Game, and it is typical game book where the main character is super strong and destroys everyone. He also takes a look at all his stats and he is surprised to see that there are so many of them and that they are all maxed out. However, another text appears saying that the effects of the sealed shuttler range will be applied shortly and Dowen is surprised to see that there is still more. Well, the sealed shuttler rank lives up to its name, because now all his power and experience will be sealed and everything will be reduced to one. The reason is because Dowen became so powerful that he had to be nerfed. So Dowen gets quite upset because he had no idea this was going to happen. And if he knew, then he would have let Cholo hit him. Now Dowen is a beginner again. And another text also appears congratulating him for having defeated Cholo the monster. And as a reward he is given a golden key. All this was about the mission Dowen had accepted from the beginning. And it was nothing more than a quest. Anyways, he received a golden key. Then Dowen leaves the classroom and Cholo's friends watched him while they talked about what happened. Certainly they didn't see anything at all but apparently there were already rumors in the school. Because seconds before had left the room, Cholo was cursing everyone on his way home. But in any case, Dowen was walking while he saw the golden key that he had won. And at first glance it looks like an ordinary key. So he decides not to give that much importance and puts the key in his pocket and heads home and also to find out the identity of the administrator who gave him those abilities. So he starts talking a little loud to try to communicate with that administrator which Dowen suspects to be the player he had met earlier. But it seems that no one is listening to him, and a new message appears saying that Dowen will be invited that night and he must accept the quest. And once he's done, he should get a seat. But Dowen doesn't even know what he's talking about since he can accept the quest, but he has no idea where to go. In that moment a boy who is walking in the opposite direction collides head to head with Dowen. As a result of that hit, the boy's nose got broken, so Dowen is worried and tells him that he will go find help to get him healed. But this boy thanks him and tells him that it's not necessary since he feels fine, so Dowen tells him to be careful then. At the same time someone calls Dowen, and it is a man named Yemen who tells Dowen not to forget the commitment to meet there. Then Dowen asks him if he started playing too but Yemen laughs and says he doesn't play any games. On the contrary, Yemen tells him that he managed to see everything that happened, he saw how Dowen beat Cholwo. Now it all makes sense to Dowen since he remembers that Yemen was there when Cholo was hitting him. In that moment Yemen asks Dowen if his concept is of a weakling with hidden powers. He approaches him with a lot of confidence and with a friendly touch on the chest he invites Dowen to go out that same night to a club with some girls. Then Dowen remembers his new quest where he had to accept and choose a seat. Now that everything makes sense, Dowen thinks Yemen isn't talking to him so he asks him. But Yemen replies saying that if he sees someone else there. In that moment, Dowen seriously thinks about whether to accept the quest or not, since the quest's name gives him a bad feeling, and Dowen decides to reject the invitation as a consequence. Another message appears saying that he will be given a penalty for having rejected the quest. As a result a strong pain appears in Dowen's body and it is so unbearable that he can't help but scream. At the same time other boys, Cholo's friends, arrive and they think that maybe Cholo hit him in the bath. The fact is that Dowen will have to endure this pain for 59 more minutes unless he accepts the quest, so obviously Dowen is forced to accept it. In a new scene we go to a street in the city and we see Yemen who was walking by and meets Dowen, and Yemen asks him why he changed his mind and decided to come, and Dowen answers him with some pretexts, but nevertheless inside his head he knew that he could not bear that pain for even 60 seconds, much less was he going to bear it for an hour. In that moment Dowen confesses that he feels a little scared and asks him if he is sure that nothing bad is going to happen. And Yemen answers him with a very scary expression that he should not worry and that he is going to have a lot of fun. So he decides to make the a story where his grandfather calls him in order to leave that place as soon as possible. But suddenly the girls who they were waiting appear, and among them is one that astonished Dowen because of its beauty, in the end. But he is surprised to see the large amount of alcohol that is served on the table. And there is also a lot of food. And Yemen just starts to open the first bottle of liquor. It's been a while and Dowen and Yemen are still drinking. Apparently the alcohol has taken effect on Dowen's head, and Yemen asks Dowen about how good he is at drinking. So Dowen replies saying that he doesn't know since he has never gotten drunk. But Dowen was saying that because he had never really drunk any alcohol, 
but Eamon understood that he's really good at drinking and told him not to worry about money and he could ask for whatever he wants since the bill was on his own. Dowen is surprised about Eamon being so friendly with him. A short time later, another boy arrives at the meeting, and it is about you. It is about a boy who is a wallet shuttle, which means that he pays others' bills. But Dowen realizes that it is the same boy with whom he had previously collided. But you made a comment that apparently Yemen didn't like at all. At first glance it can be seen that Yemen is quite cruel to you. At that moment you sits with the others and when Yemen was going to serve him a drink. He spilled the drink on his pants and obviously he did it with all the bad intention. After that he makes fun of you. But you apologizes for wearing white pants. Dowen realizes that this is definitely a case of bullying. And now everything is clear. The boy was not bleeding from the nose due to that blow when he collided with Dowen. But rather it was because seconds before he had received a beating and right inside the bathroom from where he came out. There was Yemen. Then all these things invade Dowen's head and he can't believe it because he is getting more and more involved with those thugs that he just wants to avoid it. In that moment one of the girls tells Yemen that he should sing and Yemen accepts without hesitation, but says that he will sing ballads and you should dance. Dowen already knows the situation between Yemen and you, and obviously Yemen will do that to humiliate him. But one of the girls tells him that he shouldn't ask the boy to dance. However, you is so submissive, so he agrees to dance even though deep down he doesn't want to. In this moment Dowen tells Yemen that he will go to the bathroom since he feels a little bad. While he's in the bathroom, Dowen thinks the only reason Yemen hasn't messed with him is because he thinks Dowen is a loser with hidden powers. But in reality he is a weakling without powers due to the ceiling they did to him for having reached the maximum level, and that it's only a matter of time before Yemen finds out and then. Dowen will be dead, so he came up with the idea of leaving that place as soon as possible. Since he did what the quest asked, he already agreed to leave, and so there shouldn't be any problem if he leaves. But just as he is leaving he remembers about you and in a way he understands what he is going through. So he decides to stay and when he arrives at the place he realizes that the girls are gone and you is without his pants. But Dowen asks Yemen about the boy's pants and he mischievously tells him that he feels bad for having spilled alcohol on them so he is washing them. But the truth is that he put them in a garbage can full of more alcohol. Then Dowen thinks about it but decides to act brave and quite defiantly. He tells Yemen to give him back Yu's pants. But at that moment a gigantic and very muscular man who is a friend of Yemen arrives. So Yemen tells Dowen to remind him again what would happen to him. But Dowen changes the subject and asks him to pass him the microphone because he wants to sing. Then a text appears saying that the quest has been accepted. And a new quest appears, which is about hitting Yemen's head with the microphone and he has only 30 minutes to do it. And as a reward you will receive the copper key. While Dowen reads the mission he is completely paralyzed because he has no idea what to do. Also if he does not complete the mission he obviously will have a penalty for having rejected it. And speaking of penalties, Dowen doesn't want to experience that again. And then everyone is gathered at the table and Yemen asks Machon why he is covered in blood as if he had killed someone. And he answers that he has fought with some people on the way here and that maybe he splashed a little blood. Meanwhile Yu is lying on the ground holding Machon's heavy leg. And Yu seems to be very tired but Machon warns him that if he gets to go to the ground he will destroy him with his fists. After this, Dowen is paralyzed by the situation he is experiencing right at this time. So Machon gets up and looks directly into Dowen's face and asks him if it is true that he has defeated the pimp. And Yuman says yes, that he is a man. But Macho talks about all he sees is a nerd's face. Meanwhile Dowen is in a situation where he doesn't know what to do. Because if he does what the quest asks, then Machon and Yuman will kill him. But on the other hand, if he doesn't complete the quest then the penalty would kill him. Either way, the end result is not good at all. And he thinks that if he could only use one of his abilities then he complete the quest. But unfortunately all his abilities had been sealed out. In that moment Yemen tells Dowen that he has a question for him. So he asks him if he had the power to hit Cholo why he has been suffering for everything since then. And Dowen doesn't know what to answer. But Yemen tells him not to bother answering since he invited him to that place because he has something important to tell him. And that is, that Yemen asks him to hold hands. But Dowen quickly thinks that maybe it's because Yemen likes men. But what Yemen really means is to be friends and to join his gang of thugs and also take over Guanac. He also tells him about the benefits he would have if he joined them, which would be alcohol, drugs, subordinates, money and girls and many more things. Also if Dowen shakes hands with Yemen it means that he should no longer be treated as a nerd but now he will be part of the gang of thugs. But Yemen tells him that he doesn't need to answer right now, so he'll give him some time to think about it. Meanwhile Dowen thinks that it must be a sign from God for him to change his lifestyle, and now he can be a popular and admired boy. And while he is thinking about it, Yu tells him that he has come across a golden key when they collided before at school. 
and Dowen thanks him since he didn't even remember that key. And Yu takes advantage of the situation to tell him that it is not convenient for him to be related to Yimun. And Dowen asks him why he said that. So Yu tells him that despite everything, it is clear that Dowen is not a bad boy. So once again Dowen doubts and he only has 3 minutes left to complete the quest and this puts even more pressure on him. But Dowen in the end would rather take the pain of the penalty than have to go back to his life as a nerd and be treated as such. So he discreetly acts like he receives a call and leaves the place to wait for what is coming to him, which is his penalty. Then, the story tells us about a saying that goes, when an elephant is about to die, it withdraws from its herd and then dies alone. And that is exactly what is happening with Dowen, who is in the main room of the place, suffering a lot because of the punishment he is being given for not having completed the quest. But he only has 30 seconds of suffering left so he doesn't plan to give up. The worst had already passed. Meanwhile the boys continue to enjoy the party and Machon asks for a song in particular since the alcohol has already gone to his head. So he wants to sing now. On the other hand we see Yemen going into the bathroom since he wanted to relieve himself. And suddenly he is attacked by Dawan who hits him good in the head with the microphone. He also tells Yemen that he will never shake hands with him. Immediately, Yemen is left lying on the ground and totally unconscious and suddenly the window appears saying that the quest has been completed. And while Yemen is lying on the floor, Dowen tells him that it is better to live as a video game shuttler than being a scum like him. Dowen quickly thinks about hiding Yemen where no one could find him and running away from the place. But he remembers Yu, and Dowen wants to help him out too, so he came up with an idea. And that is that Yemen's phone has fallen to the ground so Dowen starts writing to Machon about how horrible he sings. And he also tells him that he is a pig and he has to accept that he is a loser. At first, Machon thinks that it really is Yemen, so he does not hesitate to run out looking for him to destroy him. And on the other hand, Dowen is doing his things and suddenly Machon arrives and realizes everything that's happening. And suddenly a surprise quest is activated which warns that due to the player's provocation, Macho Boss is now furious, and the fight is about to start. In that moment Machon strongly kicks Dowen and sends him flying. And Machon grabs him by the neck while telling him that if he didn't know that Eamon doesn't send messages on the phone when he's drunk. This takes Dowen by surprise since he did not know that. Then Machon hits strong blows to Dowen while protesting why he has betrayed Yemen. So he turns to look at Yemen and he realizes that he is unconscious and also notices that it was because Dowen used the microphone to hit him. Then Machon calls him a coward and throws him against some boxes that were in that place. The situation is quite serious and Dowen is resigned to die. But then the golden key falls out of his pocket, and Dowen would like to use it but he doesn't know how to do it. Then the skills window appears and Dowen notices that he is in the center of all the sealed out skills. There is a lock, so Dowen inserts the golden key into that lock and opens it. Meanwhile Machon is helping Yemen, and suddenly Dowen talks to him behind his back telling him that even though his body hurts he is not going to allow them to hit him just like that. Then Machon gets ready for the second round and tells Dowen that it is good that he still has a little pride left in him. So he rushes himself against Dowen and he is furious right now and with an elevated power since he took a buff the game gave him. So, now Dowen understands that the game always wants to put him in dangerous situations since it wants to show him that weaklings can also defeat the strongest. Back to the fight, Machon and Dowen are about to hit each other. Obviously Dowen plans to use his new ability that he has unlocked thanks to the Golden Key, which is called Falcon Strike but right at the last second when he was going to activate it. It turned out that Dowen didn't have enough mana to unlock the ability. Immediately afterwards, Machon hits bad Dowen in the face and again sends him flying through the air, and Dowen thinks that it was a very troll move by the game. But then he remembers that he also got a bronze key when he completed the quest after hitting Eamon in the head. So now he plans to go and find that key since maybe that is the solution to his problem. The problem for Dowen is that he has to find a way to escape from Machon. So he comes up with a very clever plan. Luckily Machon had taken him by the neck to throw him into the air again and Dowen took advantage of the situation to call the elevator with one of his hands. By the time the elevator reached the floor where they were, Dowen started yelling, everyone attack the pig. Obviously this distracted Machon and it was the perfect moment for Dowen to escape. So he runs down the hall towards the bathroom, since it was there where he completed the previous quest. And most likely the key is lying there somewhere. Meanwhile Machon was chasing him but Dowen falls to the ground. And in less than a second the window appears saying that he has received the bronze key for having completed the quest. And also this key can be used to improve some player's attributes. And the key falls right next to Dowen and without hesitation. Dowen uses the key to open a lock that appeared in his stats and increases his mana rate. This being the situation, Dowen prepares once more to use his ability and he finally succeeds. Well, with a single blow he manages to finish off with Machon. But Dowen's little moment of glory ends soon as Yemen appears in the hallway. 
and coincidentally, Machon's older brother of also appears, whose name is Manok and he arrived at the site because he had heard a lot of fuss he and wanted to go see what was happening. And he realizes that his brother is lying on the floor and without hesitation he blames Dawan. Right now the situation for Dawan is not good at all since he is between a rock and a hard place. On one side of the corridor is Yemen and on the other side is Manok. And to add on, more boys appear, who seem to be members of Machon's band. And they have also come out because they heard a loud bang and they thought it was an earthquake. But one of them notices that Machon is lying on the floor. Then Dawan thinks about the few chances he has of winning in a fight that would start very soon since his statistics are on the ground due to the hard fight he had against Machon. Soon more and more boys appear in the hall and poor Dawan once again resigns himself to death. In a new scene we see Yu who is already out of the sight and is on his way home. But he thinks about whether it is okay to have left and thinks about Dawan. He also remembers that Machon was quite furious because he knew that it wasn't Eamon who was sending those messages, and that Machon went looking for Dawan because he suspected it was him. So Yu just limits himself to wishing him luck and also trusts that Dawan will have some strategy to get out of the place. Returning with Dawan in the corridor, and surrounded by thugs, Eamon questions him about why he hit him on the head and also warns him that he doesn't want to become his enemy. But Yemen, very furious about what happened, prepares a kick to hit Dawan. Just in that moment, one of the site's employees arrives, interrupting the scene and warning everyone present there to leave the place as quickly as possible, since apparently someone has called the police and also tells those who are underage to run down the emergency stairs while he buys them some time. Without further ado, they all leave the site while thinking about how lucky Dawan was not to end up as puree. But Yemen, before leaving, tells him that he won't forget everything that happened and that he doesn't think he would let that all go. Then the thugs leave and Dawan thinks about how opportune it would be to leave the place right now. But just in that moment Dawan faints, due to the damage accumulation from all the fights he had that day, and also the exhaustion and stress. In a new scene, Dawan finally opens his eyes, and realizes that he is with a girl, with one of those girls who had previously been with them when they were drinking with Yemen and Machon. But when Dawan asks her why is she there with him, the girl quickly shuts him up and tells him to be quiet, since they are locked in a women's bathroom. Then Dawan with a low voice asks her why he appeared there, and to please explain the situation to him. Then the girl tells him that the police are still around but she doesn't think they dare to enter the women's bathroom. Meanwhile, the police are questioning the employee saw before, who tries to evade them by telling them that how can they think about underage being in the place. But one of the officers takes out the cell phone where the call they received was registered, and the voice of the one who called the police is the voice of woman. Then we realize that it was the girl who is with Dawan who made the call. All because she had found Dawan fighting against Machon and she wanted to alert the police to be able to help him since she knew what was coming to Dawan for having defeated Machon. Dawan quickly thanks the girl for what she did and asks her how he can return the favor. But the girl says that it won't be necessary and approaches Dawan telling him that since she saved him then he must grant her a wish, and approaches as if she were going to kiss him. In a new scene we go to Dawan's apartment who is resting but a call from his mother wakes him up and when he answers he receives a loud scream from her, because his mother was very angry since Dawan has not answered her for a long time. Then Dawan explains that she shouldn't be like that just because he didn't answer for a day, and he also told her that he just had a very exhausting day so he lay down to rest. In that moment his mother exclaims, what are you talking about, since they haven't spoken for three days. But anyway, it doesn't matter since Dawan is at least still alive. So his mother tells him that she must go to work and she leaves saying goodbye. Then Dawan is shocked because he can't believe he slept for three consecutive days. But maybe it makes sense since the last day he remembers is the one he fought three thugs although he admits that the second one was slightly easier. After taking a shower, Dawan feels much better and is quite encouraged to go back into the game to find out who the administrator is and ask him about how the game system works and many other things. But when he tries to log in it turns out that the game platform can't find his ID and says that it doesn't exist within the system. Then he realizes that the administrator has removed his game credentials to prevent Dawan from trying to contact him since the real goal of all this is for Dawan to discover on his own how the game and its system work. Then Dawan recaps everything he has experienced and realizes that he has discovered three things related to how the game system works. The first thing is that the game seems to be an RPG type game. In that case, he is a character. There are also levels, some statistics and some classes, and you can also use skills. The second thing is that for some reason the system classifies thugs as monsters or bosses, and when they are defeated then the system gives you a reward. And the third thing is that the keys can be used to unlock new things that have to do with character improvements. So he looks for the silver key that he had earned when he defeated Machon. 
and he realizes that with that key he can unlock a sealed passive ability. In that order of ideas, the golden keys unlock active abilities, the bronze keys unlock players' stats, and the silver key unlocks passive abilities, and his additional information. He knows that if he does not accept a quest then he will suffer a strong penalty. But Dowen thinks that the real problem is that he has become an enemy of the entire Yemen's gang, and being this the situation, then he should think about what his next move would be. But for now he will take advantage of spring break to think about it more thoroughly. At that moment his apartments the door is knocked since Dowen bought some food for delivery because he was starving. And while he goes to the door to open a new quest appears called, The Boy Becomes a Man. The objective is to please the woman who will appear shortly since according to the system she wants to be with him. And when he opens the door, it wasn't exactly the housekeeper, rather it was the girl who had helped him that night at the bar. And Dowen asks her why she is at home, and the girl answers that he has to fulfill her wish as he had promised. Then the girl gets ready and took off her hoodie while telling Dowen to get ready and take off his clothes. But Dowen is too scared because he didn't think the mission was serious, and he certainly must accept it or he gets penalized. Also, Dowen had never done this before and the girl insisted him to he take off his clothes. So very excited, Dowen begins to take off his clothes, but the girl asks him if the rest of his clothes are in his room. And immediately, Dowen suspects that it was not what he was expecting to happen. And she also tells Dowen that he should turn off the heating as it is getting too hot. In that moment Dowen asks her what she is doing there and how she got the address of his apartment. And the girl tells him that she was able to get his address that night when she was dragging him while he was passed out. And that she realized that on his phone there was a credit card and with his apartment's address. While the girl talks to Dowen, she keeps checking his clothes and tells him that the only thing there is nerd clothes. So the girl invites him to go shopping. This is not exactly what Dowen expected, since he had understood something else due to the quest's objective. In a new scene, Dowen meets the girl at the mall and they are indeed shopping. But the clothes that the girl has made Dowen try on don't like him very much and he wonders who would dress like that. In that moment the girl replies that since he's going to be with her all day, he should at least look like a rude boy and not like a weakling. But after a while and after looking more for clothes, Dowen manages to get a piece of clothing and asks the girl how they look on him and she answers that not that bad. Then, the quest appears again with a second part and it says that he should invite the girl to eat something. Dowen then realizes that the quest must be completed in parts and in order, so he proceeds to invite the girl to eat, and tells her that he knows a good restaurant nearby and the girl accepts the invitation. It's been a while and the boys are now in the restaurant and 30 minutes have passed and they haven't spoken a single word to each other. But to break the ice, Dowen decides to ask her name and the girl answers that her name is Seon. And Dowen tells her that it is a very nice name. But the girl asks if there is anything else he wants to ask her. So Dowen tells her that there are many things he wants to know about her. But Seon tells him that he will get to know her better soon since they are going to see each other more often in the future. After this, the girl simply gets up from the chair and tells Dowen to hurry up since there is still some time left. Then another part of the quest appears telling him that he should watch a movie with the girl. And indeed Dowen complies with what the quest asks of him. Then another objective appears and that is that he must spend some time alone with the girl while they drink a coffee. A fifth part also appears saying that he should sing a sweet song to the girl. But Dowen is already beginning to question why these quests don't stop appearing. And just another one appears saying that he has to show the girl who is the boss in video games. So this is the perfect opportunity and perfect occasion for Dowen since he is already pretty good at gaming so he gets into god mode and starts playing impressively. Meanwhile two guys are watching him and are amazed by his incredible movements. And they even come to think that they might be seeing the new video game superstar. So the boys decide to approach Dowen to ask him if he wants to be part of a team of players who plays that video game. But Dowen is distracted watching how Sion observes some stuffed anchovies. So Dowen tells Sion that he's going to the bathroom and that he'll be back in a while. And 10 minutes later he comes out with his arms full of those stuffed animals and he wants to give them to Sion. He finds her so he goes out very excited to give her the stuffed animals, but before reaching her, Dowen is approached by a bully who is there with two other girls. And while he pulls his hair very hard, he asks Dowen who he thinks he is to call Sion with that tone of voice. And while Dowen suffers a lot from how he is pulling his hair, this boy begins to make fun of the stuffed animals he was carrying in his arms. But Sion once again pleads for Dowen and tells the boy to release him. Then we know the boy's name, which is Sehan and he is Sion's neighbor. Although they are not very close but they do know each other. Then Sehan asked Sion if she knew that boy and to excuse him since he didn't know. So Sehan asks Dowen who he is. But Dowen is quiet for a second and just in that second of silence Sion tells him that he is her boyfriend. And both Dowen and Sehan are surprised. And the girl says that she is serious and please go away since she interrupted her date with Dowen. Then the girl takes Dowen by the hand and they leave the place. And on the other hand Sehan and his friends are surprised because they can't believe that this nerd is Sion's boyfriend. 
The afternoon is coming and Seon tells Dawan that they finally reached the place. But it seems that Dawan already knows that place because it is a sauna. But the girl tells him that no matter what happens, he should just follow her. And she reminds him that at the end of the day, he promised that he would be with her all day. And again a new quest appears which tells him that he must enter with the girl since that is her true desire. So the guys head to the seventh floor and Dowan realizes that the girl is looking for an available room so he starts to reason with her since he thinks they are going too fast. But the girl tells him not to worry and that all he has to do is stand still and she will do the rest of the work. But Dowan tries to persuade the girl and tells her that the rooms are closed. And he also asks her why exactly they are there. And once they get through the door, Dowan is surprised since it turns out that the whole place was full of people, since it was an extraordinary meeting of a group called the Guanac. At that moment someone knocked on a table asking for silence in the room, and he also says that the thugs of Guanaco assembly will start, and as the first point to touch today, they will talk about a serious matter that is happening in a school and also happened in a bar, and it is about a very dangerous person who is causing riots all over. So he points at his TV and Dowan's photo appears, since it's really him they're talking about. But it seems that some of those present there had already heard about that boy who beat up a few thugs in a single day, and that his appearance was not very fearsome. While these people talk, Dowan turns to look at Seon quite scared and asking her what is happening. At the same time, the leader of that meeting asks everyone present who agrees to kill the suspect, and everyone present raises their hand while Dowan watches scared. An in-game text quickly pops up saying that he has been designated as Guanac Thug Group's enemy, and he is now targeted by 497 people. And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a third part, comment below with the word game. Also subscribe to the channel, hit the bell and like the video, but most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.